Well, I think the first advice I would give is to familiarise yourself with the all the data that the Department for Education is now putting in the public domain, and there is a lot of it, but it's presented in a way that's quite difficult to understand unless you've got expert knowledge of how to use, you know, the web um, and uh, digital technology to draw out information from Excel spreadsheets. But I think for, for, for wannabe investigative journalists, there's a, there's a great mine there of facts that nobody's really using at the moment. If you want to send an FOI request, the, f the first starting point is to know the information that you're trying to get and, and, and make sure your question is framed in a way that you're, if you're lucky enough to get a, a positive answer, they do give you, give you the information that you want. And that does, again, to go back to the data that's available, um, I think if you look at the data you will see that some information is not put in the public domain that probably should be. So for an example, at the moment, every school's budget is put into the public domain via the DfE uh, website, but the budgets of academies, which are the new type of independent state schools, are not put into the public domain. And the companies that run them, a lot of them are uh, sort of charitable chains, have now made themselves exempt charities, so they don't have to put their budgets on the, on the Charity Commission website either. Uh, so that's a very good area to start looking at, I think, to try and find out where the money's going in education and who's benefiting. I would say following, apart from looking at the, the DfE data sets, following the money is a very, very good clue for both FOI requests and investigation, especially in this new era we're entering where um, more and more private interests, either charitable or profit-making uh, private interests, will be able to get a foothold in public services and particularly in schools. I think if you want to investigate uh, schools, education generally, local authority papers are a good source of information. I mean, often people don't really read in detail the reports that go to uh, local authority cabinet members, that go to council meetings, <laughs> governors' meetings are all, uh, governors' minutes are always in the public domain as well. So at the moment, there are obviously discussions about schools converting to academy status, changing status. Um, do schools put their minutes on their websites? How do they use their websites? Also, what information is made available to parents? I think that's very interesting. And some schools are very good about making information available to parents, and other schools really like to hoard information to themselves and not share it with the people who are effectively the consumers of their services. In terms of getting information from Ofsted, I think the inspection reports are fairly thorough. Um, information that doesn't go into the reports that is gleaned from the inspections may be FOIable. I would have thought so. It's a public body. Um, I'm trying to think of the other regulators. Well, the Department of Education is effectively a regulator now because the exempt charities are regulated by it. Uh, there's the Young People's Learning Agency, which is going to control, which is currently controlling all the funding uh, to post-16 providers and independent state schools. Um, I, I, as far as I'm aware, there have been very few FOI requests to that organisation, which is going to change status next year to become the Education Funding Agency. So I think I think that I think it's a very very ripe area in short for more work. There's not nearly enough going on.